What's been the greatest accolade for you? You've won so many things. Mm. What's the one that meant the most to you? Well, I'll be honest with you, uh, my biggest achievement, obviously, winning seven races in a day. But overall, you know, being on top of my game for 30 years, thought, you know, it's hard enough to do it for 10. So to do it for 30, I can sit here and be proud of it, that, uh, you know, I'm still competitive at 53, so. How long do you think you can realistically continue for? <laughs> How long is a piece of string? As long as You're going to be like Sinatra, just keep retiring and coming well, back. Well, no, listen, I'm not going to... I feel like uh, this, is, this is my last bit of my career here in California. I enjoy it. You know, if you can get one or two more years out of it, it'd be great. But in my sport, you never know. Uh, you know, uh, fingers crossed. Then I don't have any accident, and I'm still competitive enough. And uh, if we can get, like I said, in a one or two years, be great. Piece, piece. Do you like America? Love it. What, what do you like about it? Uh, I feel a bit freer than I am in, in England. I don't s sound spoiled, but okay, I'm famous on the racetrack, but I can step out, paint my toenails, or wear a mini skirt. Nobody cares. <laughs> No, Are you what, doing that? No, I don't do that. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, that's the difference, right? In, in England, you, or in Europe, you get judged what you wear or what you do. You always look in yourself behind. That's the difference that I find a bit more uh, relaxing. You have a very competitive dad. He was a champion yeah. jockey many times himself. Gave you a hard time when you still were Still is. Still gives you a hard 82, time. 82, he still is. He still <laughs> tells me what should I should have done, and, you know, which gap I should have took. Really? Um, obviously, my dad was a jockey, professional jockey. Yeah, and very successful. Very successful, so I, I can't pull a wall over his eyes because, you know, exactly when I did right or you wrong. You were quite, from what I've read, you were quite a sort of shy, retiring yes, young kid, right? You weren't this charismatic no, absolutely. thunderball. And your first race, uh, you, you, your dad gave you a pony, you had a first race, you came last and you fell off after the finishing That's line. right. When that happened, did you ever imagine in your wildest thoughts that you might end up as one of the no. great jockeys in history? No, absolutely not. I was a uh, quite nice, uh, non-ambition person. Then my dad kicked me out of home. He didn't kick me out. He sent me to England. But it was like being kicked out mm. because I, I couldn't speak English. I am going to a different country. I was getting bullied. The, the weather, the food, everything else was different. And, uh, but that, that manned me up. And also, I didn't want to embarrass my dad, so it made me work extra hard. And then the riding started, I realized that, oh, maybe I'm quite good. And then it snowed out of my control. I started winning, and then from a little ball, it became a big ball, and then I became what I am now. But, I never started with the ambition that I was going to be great. When you I, ride now, I you just got is a little part of you still trying to prove a point to your dad? Oh, though? yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if my dad is... Uh, I don't think my dad has ever said, well done. Really? Yeah, no, no. no he's, never? Never. I don't think he has. Even ever. when you no, won just, the seven races he might just, He might just as a grunt. Now, when I, well, <laughs> even when you went through the car at When I won the seventh race, they asked her, guess what? I turned around to my mum and said, oh, I think the teletext is broken because Frankie's won all seven. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't believe it. But did he congratulate no, you? No, he didn't. No, no, no. Are you no, serious? That's, of course. I'm serious. That's dad. That's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah, doesn't... You know, if he says nothing, that means well done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, Are you like that with your kids? Completely the opposite. Spoil, I give him everything. Uh, yeah, completely the opposite to my dad. But, you know, but, but despite, that's, despite that's the, the old, way he is, the old generation. do you think that, that that work ethic, that will to win, the competitive spirit, all of that, do you think in the end you've got a lot of your success because of the way your dad was? Yeah, absolutely. That's why I, I'm... I'm, I, I am, I've stopped now asking him because I always end up arguing with him. I says, Dad, you push me, you brainwash me to become a champion. You know, what about, especially my sport, if I free through my career, I would have broke my knee and stopped riding. I would have felt inside, would have felt a loser. You know, and he turns out and says, well, I can't answer that. Look, you're a champion. Yeah, but what, you know, mm. he never gave a thought about something beyond your control that could happen. Mm. But, you know, but I, isn't that a champion mentality? Yeah, but it's, it's probably is. But, you know, I've got to, some way, got to thank him to make me think like that. But it's something that I can't do to my children. Mm. 
maybe because I'm new generation, maybe because I'm soft. I just can't do it. But you know, what was your mother? What was she been like with you? Sorry? Has your mother been? Different? Oh, my mum, she's uh, like mothers. You know, loves me. My 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 dad's super tough. Uh, what was your mother's proudest moment? Do you think maybe when you got the M MBE from the Queen? Um, listen, my mum, she's you know proud. You know mm. everything that I do. You know she's a typical mama. She just wants to cuddle me and feed me and. You know, uh, you know my, my dad, yeah, I th look, my, my dad is proud too, he mm. obviously doesn't show it, but, but you know, like, like what you said at that point, if it wasn't for him pushing mm. me, I would never be here because I didn't have it in me. Have you, you pointed out to him that you've now continued for two years longer than him? Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't want to rub it in. <laughs> Listen, no, it, the dad is 82, um, luckily he's still with me, uh, his brain is good, obviously he's a bit frail, but. You know, I'm, I, I guess I'm keeping him alive by him watching him me still ride. So it's good. It's good. That, a, lo uh, a lovely story, Frankie, about you is the, the seventh ride you had at Ascot yes. when you went through the cup. You ended up keeping that horse as a pet. So basically, Fujama Crest, also on the seven, he ended up going jump racing. And, uh, and I think he had a pelvis injury. Mm -hmm. So it was going to end up, God knows. So I rang the trainer and I said, could I please buy of him? Mm. And uh, I took him home and became my pet for 20 years. He, was, he lived in the field and he was the horse who made me famous. He was the horse who mm. won the seventh race. And, you know, I gave him a good life until the very end. And he, you know, he passed away one day in the field. He didn't suffer. He just, you know, he lived a ripe old age till he was about 25. That's a lovely story. Yeah. Well, I owe it to him, right? He made me famous. Finally, if I could have the power to let you relive mm. any race in your entire oh, career God. on any horse, again, right now, mm. you can do it right out on that track, which one would you choose? Very hard to say. Um, you only have one. I would say, because it's fresh in my mind, this year's champion stakes, my ever last ride in England, on my retirement day, the day that the Queen unveiled my statue, I win the champion stakes. I couldn't wrote it. Not, I don't think not even Hollywood could have wrote the finale. So I would say that, Piers. How would you like to be remembered? If you could write your own tombstone. Here lies Frankie de Tori. He... I've had fun along the way. Um, uh, and... Uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I I've, I've did my job with a smile in my face. Um, and we're both Arsenal fans. Absolutely. We're going through a very tough period I right know, now. I know, we haven't I know. I can't fix that. We haven't won the Premier League since 2004. <laughs> I know. You're a miracle worker. Do you see any prospect we can do it this year? <laughs> yeah, we've still got three weeks. If we buy a nice centre forward, yes. I think we can. We've got to have a winner, a striker. Come on. A killer. Come on. Like We've got you. Three weeks left. Come on. <laughs> You've got plenty of time to buy one. Frankie, great to Thank see you, you in Hollywood. Thank you, Piers. All the best.